All right. Calling the February um, 8th, 2022, Pilot City Schools Board of Education meeting to order. Um, start off by acknowledging AB 361, where we are going to revisit every 30 days the conditions um, and continue, continue meeting in this hybrid fashion as long as we're in this pandemic. Um, do we have any comments from the public on closed session items? Okay. Okay. We'll open the chat for like half a minute in case you would like to make a comment on something in the closed session. All right, we are going to close the chat and adjourn to closed session. All right, reconvening. Um, Good evening, everybody. I want to go here, here we're in. Um, Seven adoption approval of the agenda. We need to make an amend. We need to amend um, action item fourteen point one point two, first reading of the board bylaw revision. I just want to note that we um, we need to move that over to discussion. Move that into discussion. It's not an action. Item. You need to vote on that. I move to move fourteen point one point two to a discussion item. A second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. Um, all right. Moving on to the public hearing. What is the public hearing? Is there a public hearing? No. She said, what is that was a placeholder, I think. Okay. It's like, <laughs> am I missing something? Okay. <laughs> All right, adoption and approval of the agenda. I move to adopt and approve the agenda. As amended. As amended. As amended. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, special recognitions, reports and presentations. Looks like we have McKinley, McNair, Pax, Casa, and Petaluma High School. Sure. Okay. Okay, which student do we have currently? McKinley or Pat? Oh, it's, it's there. It's together. Oh. We're just missing one of the students. Oh. Hi everyone, it's Mrs. Larson here. It is a combo, McKinley Pax, and I just want to introduce my Petaluma Accelerated Charter Leadership Team who's taken the lead on this amazing presentation. So um, we're gonna go ahead and we weren't sure if everyone was gonna make it tonight. So Anya, start us off. Lucy came up with the introduction. Yep, um, we are the PAX leadership team and we're here to present to you this video we made about McKinley and PAX.
What was your favorite project this year? I like doing the art weaving project this year. Well, my favorite project this year was when we did our Native American project. It was really fun because I got to learn about a lot of cultures. What is your favorite thing about McKinley? Mm, soccer. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Me gusta jugar en la parque porque porque puedes hablar con mis amigos. Yo amo a mis cantos porque me me enseña matemáticas. I like how there is an excellent program and how like if if like they they help you a lot if if like you need if you need more help. Aunque es una escuela muy grande y puedo jugar fútbol con mis amigos um, cuando es recreo o noche. Dem to Shay McKinley, Le Jean à la community. My favorite thing about McKinley is that because it's a re it's a relatively small class, the teachers can really get some idea and push it into your desk. My favorite part about McKinley is the curriculum. I think every subject has its own good like program, and I think I've learned a lot. Really friendly, and it's because it's such a small school, like you know everyone there. I feel like the teachers at McKinley are really nice because they're really supportive and they help you every step of the way. Me gusta mi maestra. How do you feel you contribute to the McKinley community? Well, during Kindness Week, we organized an entire week to promote kindness for everyone in our community. And I did this one with the partner, and his name is Will. During Kindness Week, I wrote a letter to my teacher. We made posters for Kindness Week. Being a part of leadership, we made posters to make the school aware of a could try if we did. Thank you all. Thank you. Awesome leadership team. You're amazing. I love our video. <laughs> Thank you. Awesome, Adrian. All right, look like looks like McNear's up next. Here. There's a couple still missing. Let's give them one second. Um, I don't think they're there, Melissa. They're not just these three. Okay. Well, we will go ahead and start. I'm Melissa Becker and I'm the new principal at McNear and I have had an awesome time getting to know these students and getting to learn about the community. And so our leadership team has made a slideshow for you. So ladies that are here, why don't you go ahead and begin? Pop, our first person's not here. So I'll go ahead and start. Poppy, are you here? No, okay. So we, uh, good evening, esteemed Philomath City School Board. Thank you for letting us share tonight. We're the student leadership team. We are the founding fourth through sixth grade team. And we, have, we, we began meeting a few weeks ago. We are proud that we are all determined to make this the best year yet at McNair. So far, we have worked on developing student-centered playground rules, created junior yard supervisors, selected fun spirit days, celebrated the great 
kindness challenge and have worked as a team to problem solve issues that we care about on our campus. At our next meeting, we will be designing buttons that we will wear on campus to identify ourselves while we're helping work with younger students. We enjoy working together as a team to make school announcements and we will be planning school community service over the next few months. During Kindness Week, we created posters and then welcomed our students to each morning. It was fun to open doors and say good morning to the kids, parents, <laughs> set the day right off. We surprised our students with the delivery of new playground balls with our new playground expectations and everyone was so happy. We discussed the rules we currently had at school and why they were or weren't important. From from there, we chose different popular playground games and made rules that have made playground more safe and fun. As our kickoff to kindness week, we thought a smiley face balloon in each classroom would brighten everyone's day, and they did. We plan on completing many activities this year that will help us learn to become future leaders. <laughs> she's on mute do you want can you get yourself off mute evie no it won't let you turn off mute i don't know if i can help you um all right, Evie, I'll go ahead and read your one slide and then you'll have another term if it comes back and you can get your um, sound up, okay? So we have we have two librarians at our school, Miss Carly and Cutter the Snake. Cutter is a friendly school snake who's lived at McNair for over 15 years. Miss Carly invites us in each week to check out books where we can sit, where we can sit in the quiet room and hear a story. Miss Carly is an excellent reader and she gets everyone excited about reading. This month, we're having three guest illustrators and authors, Mac Barnett, Carlin, Carson Ellis, and Ch Judd Wittick. Chud Wittick. We will have a book fair coming up in March, and we'll have an all-school read across America day. Our goal is to instill a love of reading into all of our students by helping everyone have some books they love to read each week by, when visiting the library. And Cora, do you want to read this next one for her? Since she's not here. Okay, I can do that. Okay. McNear is focused on hands-on learning. We love to build and explore a beautifully equipped mask room and maker's room. Last week, sixth graders students used microscope, microscopes to examine onion skins and recorded their findings in science journals. To, be, to become thinkers who can clearly express their ideas with others, We'll learn to work in cooperative groups, creating hypotheses and figuring out solutions together. We take time that everyone is heard and that we don't give up until we've given our best problem solving. Our maker problem program has two parts. Our high tech mask room, which stands for McNear Art and Science Center and our low tech maker room. This month, Be Mrs. Becker will be working with each class in our in our maker room on, on brown paper bag challenges where, where we will work in triads. Tri sorry, in triads to build something. We will then we will then compare our builds and seek out the best strategies so that we can understand the way things work. We've also been working on constructing marble runs. These are the creations from Mrs. Garcia's third grade class. Our next challenge will be taking marbles and having them race down pegboards to discover how to make them go the fastest, the steepest, the slowest, and the most turns. We'll record our data and compare each class's results. Mrs. Lyon is working with our mask parents to develop a school school-wide monthly challenges. Next month's challenge will be a mini card challenge.
trying to come in now. Um, Poppy is here. Oh, she is? Okay. Yeah. Um, also, um, in our unique kindergarten building, we learn to play and create and sing. We love that our classrooms are big with a cooking area. Life-size castle. Imagine imaginative play areas, science centers, art areas, and their own playground. McNear loves our TK and Kimball students because they are smart, kind, and cute. Last week, they were spotted walking around the school as junior scientists, investigating the outdoors with lab coats and keen observation skills. Have you ever seen our kindergarten classroom? It has a life-size it has a castle that is epic. Kindergarten is a favorite memory of our upper grade Falcons. Poppy, do you want to do this slide since you're on now? You see her, Marina? Melissa, I don't think she's on. Okay, so Marina, you saw her on there? I don't think she's there, honey. Okay. She's on, she's on, she's having technical difficulties. Okay, all right. Do you know what name she's under? Yeah, Poppy uh, Tano, uh, Nelson Smith. Yeah, yeah. What was that? Poppy Tano, Nelson Smith. She's not showing up under that name. name. Yeah, she's not showing up under that name. Okay. We'll keep going then. Right. Our student leadership team is amazing. We meet on, meet on Thursdays to discuss problems on our campus and we brainstorm to resolve them. Um, we have a wonderful group of parents who do recess renaissance on our playground. Sometimes they offer beating, button making, or small crafts because sometimes it's fun to do something other than play a game. There's enough space for everyone to find a game, a quiet space, or an activity that they enjoy. Sometimes classes come out to decorate the playground with chalk drawings or other positive sayings that encourage us to be kind. Disco Fridays are the way we celebrate our hard work for the week. Six, sixth grade students take turns signing up as DJs as they spin tunes throughout recess while the students play, dance, and have fun with bubbles. Students can select songs in our DJ's screen the songs and create the song list for that week. Disco Friday is already very popular. Last week, almost 85% of our school came in blue, yellow, and falcon wear, and some people even wore boas. YMCA and Never Gonna Give You Up by Rick Astley are two of our favorite songs right now. <laughs> our next two bonus spirit days were selected by us, and they will be Bring Anything But a Backpack Day and Twin Day for February 22nd, 2022. Recently, we celebrated the 100th day of school with costumes, activities, and a bulletin board of 100 reasons we love McNear. Go ahead, Cora. Um, I'm. Our performing arts. Uh, wasn't there more to that last slide or no? You can keep going, that's okay. No? Oh, okay. Um, our performing arts program is. Program are really popular with our students and our families. Our directors care about us and they give us the opportunity to try new personalities while on stage. They let us give input into scenes and this year I think Susical will be our best musical ever. Dancing, singing, and stage design crew members mean there's, means there's something for everyone. McNear allows us to be ourselves, to take, risk, to take risks, and, because there's a lot of adults around to help us. Uh, our school partners with outside with outside community groups to strengthen our environmental science and maker programs. This year, the science department at SCOR SCO. SCO has been working our, with our teachers during environmental literacy trainings at their Wednesday meetings to learn ways to teach us hands-on lessons. Last week, last week they came and made paper habitats and paper mache animals with one of our classes. We also 
work with Point Blue Science Organization and STRAW. STRAW helps us learn skills we need to help restore our watershed. We enjoy working in our natural habitat to discover all the wildlife and plant life that are on our playground. Miss Sky leads us through hands-on gardening lessons that connect to our curriculum or seasonal garden. Produces gourds that are transformed into fairy gardens. Corn that is enjoyed as popcorn and spring flowers that are presented as beautiful bouquets. We tend to our crops learning to weed of and of this year, our TK grew corn and made popcorn. Our beautiful and flourishing, beautiful, our beautiful and flourishing working garden sits at the heart of our school and near the lunch tables, so that we can act, actively interact with the growing space every day. Um, can I can I do this last one? Absolutely. All right. Our school is happy. We care about each other and we want to make our school the best school in Petaluma. We have buddy classes so that our older students can make good relationships with a younger student to make them feel happy at a school and to make us feel connected. When you look in the classroom windows, there are lots of projects that connect academics to environmental environment and art. Our SDC class last week, students shared um, paper mache animals that they created in habitats that they made with a partner. Students working in pairs to share um, where were, to, to share presentations that include an oral report explaining the animal and sharing a video. Students were guided by the scientists department at SCO. We we bring our community resources together to bring out the best in our students. We love McNair and hope you do too. Thank you for listening. Good job, ladies. <laughs> Thank you very much. All right. Um, next up, we have our high schools. It's like Casa. Hi, Carissa. Hey. Yeah. Hey. Go First ahead. of all, I'm sorry. I just came out of a gymnastics practice. Um, I will wait for the presentation to get up. Hi, so um, as you just heard, I'm Carissa. I'm one of the ASB presidents at Casa Grande right now. Um, and I'm here to tell you about December through February in the big house. To kick us off with our sports, pun intended, um, both of the soccer teams are doing phenomenal. Um, the boys and girls soccer teams are both having amazing seasons. Um, on another side of our campus, our um, United Anglers program is now officially the carriers of critically endangered coho salmon from Santa Cruz. The first of many deliveries came in a few weeks ago. Moving forward, we are going to have drop-offs every Tuesday and Thursday for a while until we hit our mark of 80,000 to 100,000 100, eggs. These eggs are cared for by um, environmental conservation students. And um, I personally am friends with quite a few environmental conservation students, and they are all thrilled about this. Uh, the gardening and nursery management classes cook their pizza in their garden pizza oven with the assistance from the culinary arts program. They were making the dough from scratch, topped it, and cooked it in the garden and enjoyed some time outside, enjoying time together. The music department has a new baby grand piano added to the instrument collection. Choir and dance students alike are enjoying the new piano and getting tremendous use out of it. Flipping back to 
sports, also pun intended. Um, our wrestlers are amazing. Sakiko Pozorno, our se- one of our senior wrestlers, is still undefeated. Boys Varsity is still undefeated. Paso Grande 60 and Vintage 20 at a recent meet. And we'd like to congratulate seniors Sam Furkus, Sakiko Pizorno, Emmett Peterson, Ryan Noggle, Tim Vesnes, Zach Babel, Trevor Lival, Carlos Guzman Medina, and Jack Martin on a wonderful senior night. Still on sports. We are very proud of our sports in the big house. Both the girls and boys teams are having a phenomenal season. Uh, This one's actually personal to me, um, but one of our rooms, H5, which was previously the disciplinary office, um, has now been renovated to a mental health safe space as um, my Girl Scout Gold Award. Um, So this is now a place where students can go and decompress and take whatever time they need. Um, Project TRUE, which stands for Teens, Are You Educated, is a youth leadership development program facilitated by the Center for Wellbeing that utilizes a peer-to-peer education model focusing on tobacco, cannabis, and alcohol. Project TRUE provides youth opportunities to gain confidence and skills around leadership, advocacy, public speaking, and research. Youth also learn about mental health and positive coping skills to better support their peers. Project True is now working at CASA with students to create presentations on substance use and its effects on mental health for other students. Similar to what I heard um, McNear and McKinley talking about, ASB is hosting a kindness week this week. Yesterday, donations were taken for pennies for polio. Today, there were a bunch of positive sticky notes all around campus. Tomorrow is wearing yellow for Positivity Day. Thursday, we are distributing cookies and everyone who comes and gets a cookie will also receive a compliment. And Friday, we will be donating all fundraised money to Pennies for Polio. And much like most application-based classes, ASB is beginning the application process and on the search for the next generation of ASB students. As a senior, I'm A little sad that I can't pick up an application, but excited to see what the program holds. And now I've got some news about what's coming up. So the the GQ event is making a comeback. Formerly known as Mr. GQ, it is now going to be the Gaucho Quarterly Charity Event. So um, it's making a comeback and the revamp focus is on inclusivity and giving. So our two biggest changes are that um, now instead of just males in the senior class being able to participate, anybody from the senior class is able to participate. Um, And we are focusing more on giving and making it more clear that this is a charity event and um, all money raised will be going to the charity that the winning um, gaucho is representing. Now this one's a secret, so don't tell anyone. But ASB is working on some staff appreciation. So don't tell any class of staff that you know. And that is what has been happening at the big house. Good job. Thank you, great job. All right, so looks like Petaluma High next. Hello, I am Nicoletta. I will be presenting Petaluma High Schools. Um, What we've been doing since the start of the semester. I'm sorry, I'm trying to get this to share my screen. Is that it? Okay. There. Okay. Is it working? I'm so sorry. Yes. Yeah, okay, okay. So starting off, um, our winter sports are actually wrapping up this week. A part of our winter sports, we have our boys and girls soccer team, boys and girls basketball team, and wrestling. And this is actually our last week of league this week. And we have multiple of our winter sports teams are going to playoffs. Our girls soccer team is and our boys basketball team. And we are both very proud of that. And then along with girls soccer, we have our senior nights 
which have been happening. Last night, we just had our boy, our girls basketball senior night, and tonight is our boys basketball senior night. And so what we've been doing for this is for our senior nights this time around, we have little plaques made for each of the seniors of their respective sports. And we paint them and then we give them out to them on senior night. And then also with our indoor senior night sports, since there is no students allowed to the game and oftentimes some parents right now, we've actually are, we've been live streaming the games. And for this scene, for our senior nights, we actually are having like a projection of the games on like outside of the gym. And so we can have parents and students watch and still support the teams. And we've made many decorations for the sports teams just to show like they still have our student support from them. And then also recently we've had our class registration going on. And so this includes our counselors have been going to all of our freshman, sophomore, and junior classes to be registering all of our students for next year's classes. As a senior, it's like a little bittersweet not to have that registration going on. It's kind of like just insane that I am going to going to college next year, but it's always a fun time to register for your classes next year. And then on campus, we've also had various Valentine's activities going on. Our sophomore class is currently selling candy grams at lunch, which includes you can buy a lollipop from the sophomore class along with a little note and you can send it to whoever you want to on campus. And it's the first sophomore fundraiser that they've ever had. So it's really exciting for them. And similarly, our choir is doing singing Valentine's and this is always a hit at school. It's basically kind of like candy grams. You can buy a singing Valentine for anyone on campus and choir will go into like the class that you request of them and they will go and sing to them during class. And recently we've had multiple clubs like Circle of Friends and also our human interaction classes. They have participated in the PPC SC special delivery project, which is basically making homemade Valentines for elderly and just you get to send them and just to give them a little Valentine treat. And then starting, I think it started around in November, our Troy store opened up again and they sell every break. And what it is, it's basically, you can buy Troy gear from them. They sell popcorn and their best seller is hot chocolate. And you just see everyone at break, they'll have their hot chocolate and popcorn. And it's been really popular. And our Troy store is run by our entrepreneurship class. And our jazz band is currently there on February 18th. They are going to be performing with the Gun Hild Carling Band. And originally this was scheduled for the end of January, but due to COVID, it got pushed back to February 18th. And then the senior class right now is currently working on putting together a senior video from all of the moments from our senior year. And we're hoping to display it at our senior sunset at the end of the year. And so we're in the works to be getting like videos from everyone on campus who's been a senior, just so we don't just limit it to like our ASB videos, but rather from the whole student body. And so we've had our TBC has been running announcements and we have a Google form to everyone to submit their favorite senior videos. And then recently our environmental club, I think it was Saturday, January 29th, they had a tree planting event and it was on Saturday outside of school. They hosted just like where we planted trees in the front of our school. And currently we have spring sports coming up and tryouts are this week. I just came from lacrosse tryouts and our spring sports include girls lacrosse, boys lacrosse, softball, baseball, and track. And then coming up at Petaluma High School, similarly to CASA, we have our GQ performance on March 12th. And like CASA, we also do not have it just open to male participants this year. We do have female participants and I'm a part of planning the show and it's going pretty good so far. And I'm really excited for it to happen. And we also have our neon dance coming up in April. Originally, we were planning on having our winter formal, actually. It was supposed to be last week, but with COVID, we just decided to postpone it and we pushed the dance back until April and we're just gonna have a neon dance instead. And then we also have a various like Valentine's lunchtime activities coming up this Friday. And then along with, we have a Super Bowl lunchtime activity, which will be happening next Friday. And yeah, that's just a little bit of what Petaluma High has been up to. Thank 
Thank you very much. Good job. All right. Next up, um, comments from the public on non-agendized items. So we're going to open the chat for a few minutes. Please put your first and last name in the chat. And um, also the topic that you would like to speak about. And this is on non-agendized items. So I'm going to read our board uh, public comment policy while the chat's open. All right. Under government code section 54954.3a, members of the public have the right to address the governing board on any items of interest, providing it relates to the subject matter jurisdiction of the school district. While government code allows speakers to criticize the district's policies, procedures, program services, and or employees, the district does have a policy specific to complaints against employees. Should comments from the public pertain to a specific district employee, the board requests that the complaint first be submitted in writing to the employee's immediate supervisor for investigation. If the comment is about something that is not on the agenda, it will be heard only during the public comment on non-agendized items period. Once that part of the meeting is over, comments will only be taken on agenda items during the discussion of those items. The board values public comments, and although we cannot take action or discuss items not on the agenda, we carefully listen and appreciate input from the public. Public comments are subject to a four minute per person limit or a 20 minute, 20 minute limit per subject matter. Additionally, a public speaker can be cut off for exceeding the allotted time or for willfully causing an actual disruption to the meeting. Before cutting a person off or removing someone, the board will give at least one clear warning. If you were cut off or warned previously, please consider that your warning. You can also submit your input in writing by email or other means to the superintendent, board members, or other designated staff. All right. Oh, that's right. Uh, Thanks for the reminder. <laughs> so we just have the one, I guess. Is there any? Is there anyone else? I cannot see it. Left my glasses in the car. Oh, okay. I'll let you decide, Matthew, when to close the chat. I think we can close the chat to the video right now. All right, so I will start by reading our first comment that was sent over email. It was from Linda Judah. I would like to add a comment to the meeting. I would like to request the board meetings continue to be conducted with a Zoom attendance as an option. This greatly increases accessibility and it makes it much easier for many more people to attend. Thank you. Okay, and so um, who is up on the meeting? Who's first, our first? First one is uh, Peter Costas. Oh, and the okay. Topic is go Peter. trustees, go updates. All right. Um, good evening, everybody. Can you hear me? Yep. Hi, Hi Peter. Peter. Good evening. Good evening. Good to see everybody again. Maybe I can show up there in person one of these days. <laughs> Come on down. That would be great. <laughs> you know, first of all, I, I got to say, I, I, I so much enjoy your student um, reports. Um, you know, you always make them a, an integral part of your board presentations for all the years I've been coming there. And um, just um, uh, incredible participation. And, you know, what a great idea that at uh, CASA changing a, a discipline room into a, a mental health room. I mean, that, 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 that was just, you know, incredible. Um, so just a, a few updates here. Um, you know, um, last week, the school board, uh, we passed a resolution uh, honoring and appreciating school counselors for school counseling week. And um, I mean, the work that they do is always incredible, but especially during these times, it's it's just been critical. So we honor, you know, all school counselors and we can put in school psychologists and everybody else that's associated with, with counseling. As you must know that uh, we have a, a contested uh, election for the county superintendent coming up in June. 
Uh, it's going to be uh, somebody's going to have to fill the big shoes of Steve Harrington, who has really provided a lot of leadership, especially over the last four years with the fires and the smoke, and and now with 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 COVID. So we have uh, Amy Carter. She was a former uh, Rancho Cotati principal, and now she's a Marin County Office of Education Assistant Superintendent. Uh, Ron Calloway, he was a longtime superintendent at Mark West Union School District, and Brad Cascarelli was the principal of Hidden Valley Elementary School in, uh, in Santa Rosa. So Skull's going to do a couple of um, forums uh, for these candidates to speak to the public. One will be in the spring. And if there is a runoff election for the fall, then we'll have the second forum in the fall. And um, finally, I just want to share with you that um, there's going to be a, a school and college, um, school and college services are going to put on a um, new legislation workshop for all um, school administrators and board members. And this will be on February 22nd um, at 2 p.m. I'm sure it'll be on Zoom. So that's, of course, as always, it's free. And uh, you can go to the, the SCO website and register for that. And finally, and as always, I just um, thank you for thank you for your service. Have a good evening. Thank you, Peter. Appreciate it. Next up, we have thank Sarah, uh, Sarah Sychek, uh, follow up on BIPOC Student Forum. Hi, Sarah. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi, Sarah. Hi, how are you? Long time no see, you wonderful people. Thank you for doing the work that you're doing. I wanted to um, first off give a shout out to Ellen Webster for uh, coming out to Mary Collins School, Cherry Valley, the other day. I um, And I've also heard from other schools where you all are coming in to visit to have office hours and be listening in and talking with the parents. And it is being received very well. Um, we are very thankful for that type of participation and coming in and, and letting us share our voices with you one-on-one. -on -one. So thank you so much. I was so happy to see you in our wonderful library. Um, I wanted to follow up on something. Now, I haven't been here in person, but I've been watching, um, or I guess on Zoom, but I've been uh, watching the, the replays, and there's been a couple of um, conversations in regards to following up on the, student, uh, the BIPOC student forum, wherein they were speaking out in regards to feelings of um, and marginalization and being left out and 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 fears for the students who are coming below them and after them and I'm curious as to what's been happening um, on a district level as far as how we're addressing that I know that we're in between things with circle up and 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 the contract wise that's challenging um, uh, but I've also seen um, some call outs for requesting information on that and I just would love to hear more follow-up on what's happening in order to meet the needs of those students, both um, social and emotionally, as well as just um, within policies in the schools. So I wanted to thank you all again. It's good to see you all here. You all inspire me on the daily. I really appreciate all the hard work that you've been doing. Have a good evening. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you. All right, next up. Uh, report on activities and correspondence. Um, since the last board meeting, we have had office hours at McNear, Cherry Valley. Sorry, I guess just McNear and Cherry Valley. Um, Live Oak, oh, and Grant. Uh, Live Oak strategic planning meeting. Um, and then our student board member, soccer games against Sonoma, Tam, Casa, <laughs> and, and American Canyon. And then Casa again. Cool. Next up, comments from the public on consent agenda items. I'm not gonna reread the policy, same policy. We'll open the chat for a few minutes, first and last name in the chat and the item that you would like to speak about.
I think we can close the chat. I don't see there, there are no comments. Okay. All right. Moving on um, to the consent agenda. Any motion? We'll move to uh, approve the consent agenda. Second. All right. Any comments, questions? Maddie, I'll let you go first and so I don't forget you at the end. <laughs> Uh, I actually have, uh, I have no, well, I have one question about the articulation agreement, the hospitality management. I just wanted to, um, I, I, my only question was um, whether this is, you know, uh, an already existing class that is in, this is just like uh, the paperwork for articulation. Uh, so it's really coming from the JC. Because this, if it's a new class that hasn't come before us, that was the only thing I was wondering. Yeah, this is a renewal, uh, a four-year okay. renewal um, for our students' uh, partnership with um, Santa Rosa Junior College. Fabulous. Sure. Yeah, uh, I've got a question on the uh, fiscal, on the... Um, what do we call the this audit? thing? The <laughs> audit. Thank you, the <laughs> audit. Yeah. Um, on the uh, towards the end on the summary of the audits results uh, I'm looking at page 69 um, you know they, there are three I guess they're characterizing as kind of minor uh, deficiencies the one that I, I, I was just curious about was um, obligations to private schools uh, under ESSER 1 I didn't even realize we had obligations to private schools under ESSER 1. Could you tell us about that, Chris? Sure. I think um, um, you'll notice there was three audit findings, and they all right. related to um, COVID. Well, basically, in, I mean, yeah. that's essentially what happened is with COVID, there were some items missed, um, specifically reaching out to some of our partner um, non-public schools or private schools to see if they wanted to participate. You know, part of it was we're all in a pandemic. We we're all um, not operating school. And so I think it would have been challenging either way. And it wasn't that we hadn't reached out. I think it really was a documentation, making sure we could actually show um, the documentation that that the department had reached out to them. So under ESSER 1, we were we reached out to private the private schools in our Jurisdiction is that what the deal was? Yes, similarly to Title One, we're obligated to reach out to the private schools and see if they want to participate, and then we allocate a certain dollar amount to them based on their um, free and reduced meals or whatever pupil count quali they qualify under. So that was an obligation under the ESSER One as well. And then the subsequent ESSERs, it was directly from the feds. We didn't have to do that. Is that right? We'll be doing it this year. We'll be reaching out oh, yeah. this year. To those private schools. That was it for me. Okay. Malaya or Katie, do you guys have any comments or questions on any of these items? No? Okay. Ellen or Caitlin? No? I would I would just like to give a little a little background into um twelve point three point three, the PCS overnight field trip requests. Mm -hmm. we them. Um, if you remember several months ago, Dr. Mace talked about overnight field trips being high risk activity, highly discouraged. We followed suit and we had a board, we had a, um, a board, we had a um, sort of some guidance around overnight field trips that we were highly discouraging them at the, at the time. Um, at this point, our students five five and above have had ample opportunity for to uh, be vaccinated if they or their family so chose choose to do so, um, including clinics at several at several of our own campuses. Um, also our our counts here, our, our COVID numbers in Sonoma County and, and really the nation are dropping. Um, I was at the superintendent meeting in the county on Friday and kind of did a, took a temperature gauge of the, of the, uh, the room. And following suit with the majority of districts um, in the county, we're working on updating our overnight, overnight field trip guidance um, to drop the vaccination requirement and include a testing component into the overnight field trip. So, of course, we're still encouraging students to get vaccinated. Um, it, ideally, also testing because even students who are vaccinated who are having symptoms, we want to try to catch before they go on a field trip to avoid any sort of stress. So those are, and then Tony, if you want to add anything about 
the actual field trip facilities where they're going, the code policies that you looked up. Yeah. So another part is just asking the, the schools to do due diligence on finding out if the venues that they're going to also provide any kind of safety measures in regards to COVID, um, especially if they're flying on a plane and going somewhere in like you know out of state. We really want to make sure that there's some safety protocols in place where they're going or as much as possible um, kids are having the best uh, chance to be safe and, uh, and able to participate in a safe manner. But essentially at this point in the pandemic, believing that students we're starting to return to some sense of normalcy. Students are we uh, deeply need this sort of uh, this, this sort of activity, and that's mm -hmm. that's the direction that we're, we're heading. In. So I just wanted to give the board an update on that. So is it an either or? Either they're vaccinated or they test negative. I believe some of the some of the districts it's a, it's a testing before as well because you know, as myself as an example, you can see be vac vaccinated and boosted and still have symptoms. Right. Well. We want to make sure that as they're as they're going on their field trip, we're catching anything that goes in. So they'll all be tested before tested. they go. Thank you. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Wow. Moving on. Comments from the public on action items. We'll uh, leave the chat open for a little bit less than a minute. First and last name, and what you would like to speak about. All right, let's go ahead and close the chat. I don't, there are no comments, no public comments. Okay, um, all right. Action item 14.1.1. Um, you guys still comfortable continuing in a hybrid fashion? Um, I was just wondering if uh, this is future business or are we gonna address this here? I would love to invite uh, the pre people who are presenting the student of the month back in person. Yeah, I think it would be that? great to invite them in person, but not require it. Yes, yeah, yeah. I agree. Yeah. I would love to see them back here then. Starting, starting, when would you like to do this? The next meeting? Next morning, okay. Isn't um, the ban lifted like on the 11th? Yeah. Well, the state, the state one, the, the county one is to be determined. Okay. Right. Okay. Yeah. Oh, so, I thought that so one was. To, to clarify that, I think I'm talking about the 15th statement. I've had questions come up from a lot of different people. So, this, um, schools, um, public transportation, airplanes, like there's zero. They're not. They will not be lifting the mask, uh, masking for right. public schools, or okay. public or private schools in the state with that. With, with, um, I think that will be. That'll be more of a, a CDPH decision. So, but would it be okay to invite those? We could, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, but masked, right? Well, of course. Oh, I, I thought I think you were asking about the um, the, what do you call it, the shelter in place? Oh. I thought you were talking about that. No, not no, the no. I'm, but so it would be okay for us to extend those invitations as long as they're masked. Yes. Yeah. And or give them the option. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Thank so you. we could have you know could be a hybrid situation where. Okay. Some some students are are able to come in person and present. Great, and some they present via Zoom. You know, okay. If you want me to can extend the invitation, mm -hmm. yes, so, that'd okay. be great. We will do that. What do you, Katie and Malai? What do you guys think? Oh, yeah, great idea. Yeah. You're comfortable having people back? Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Cool. All right. Oh, so we have to vote on this, right? Yeah. Yeah. All right. I move to approve. AB361? Uh, hybrid option uh, two. Yeah. <laughs> right? To continue with yeah. the hybrid option. Yeah. Yeah. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Um, 
board bylaw revision. So that was yeah. we moved that. Oh, well, that was moved. But never mind. Yeah. See, I ignored my own arrow. Okay. <laughs> uh, student attendance calendars. I'm gonna have Jason just do a quick intro of this one, just to explain the process. And then... Sure. So um, the calendar committee consists of representatives from. Uh, from our district administration, from PFT, from CSEA. It, um, we also, uh, and confidential, we also include uh, one member from one of the neighboring districts. So Mark Gardner, the superintendent at WA, joined us for our calendar committee uh, this year. And uh, we wanted to make sure this year that we included a lot of input in the, in the development of the calendar. So we started by a survey of, of all of our stakeholders, both uh, employees and um, families, before we even put anything out and ask them some questions about what was important to them in a calendar and what were some strengths of previous calendars, what were some challenges that they found with previous calendars. We had over 500 responses to go through um, <laughs> and realize that open ended, 500 open ended responses take a lot of time to go through. Um, and then we took that input and we drafted the calendar. And then we post published that calendar out as a draft for both the traditional and the year round. And we again asked for feedback. This time it was less open ended, which made it a little bit easier with more percentages that we could see. And we took that into account and our, our thinking did change. So if you were tracking on this, if you saw the first draft and now you see this one, there were some changes that we made based on the input that we got from parents and different input that we got from teachers. So there were different factors as we were developing the calendar that were really pressure points. Like how long should Thanksgiving break be? And when should we start our winter break or finish it? Like those were all challenging. And uh, the, the feedback from our stakeholders helped us to make a, what we felt was the best decision. Calendars are always hard. You know, there, there's somebody that's gonna be unhappy with whatever you go with. So, mm -hmm. but we felt that we did our, very best that we could to weigh all of the stakeholder input and come up with two calendars in a thorough process to try and, and, uh, and come up with something that would fit our district. And so that's what you're looking at is, is the two resulting drafts for 22 to 23 um, that we're bringing forward tonight. We also worked on next year so we have drafts of those but we're we were going to still be looking at those and considering those and, and bring those to you later um just so we aren't having to do two and if we want to make revisions we won't have to revise something you've approved so we're anticipating in 23 24 coming sometime so it's some sort of summertime so that we'll have yeah. always be a year and a half planned out so and then the calendar committee will meet again so we always you know, right now we're only we have six months left in this calendar, five months left in this calendar. People need to plan further ahead. Yeah. So well we'll be at least a year and a half up, trying to stay at least a year and a half to you. You know, one thing one thing that we have done in the past was we were doing two years at a time. So we met this year to plan the next two years. As a committee, we decided, you know, let's meet next year and plan the next two years. So we'll we'll be we'll never We'll always be ready at, in, in, at the summertime to publish the following year. So we're trying to be more advanced, plan farther out. Jason, do are they voted on by by the staff, by classified and certificated? Voted, they're not voted on. So they're the the input the input is they they share their input, mm -hmm. and it was a range of input as you can imagine. Mm -hmm. But uh, we use that as a as a group to to make adjustments. Okay. And the nice thing was that, at least in this case, the input was was really clear um, around those those questions that were hard to answer. Um, we felt that that we got clear messages from our stakeholders about which way we should go with things. And Ellen, it's, it's a contractually defined process. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I wondered about the parent teacher conferences because we had heard about you know how parents were saying it was work around for too long. I see it's only one week in the spring semester, which just sounds mm -hmm. great, but then it's still two weeks in the fall. So mm -hmm. what what was the feedback around that from parents so and teachers? That that feedback was um, we did we did see a lot of feedback around that about how difficult two weeks was. Mm -hmm. We also um, felt that mm -hmm. there. While we had an interest in, in looking at that, we need some more discussions because mm -hmm. there's things around negotiated days, mm -hmm. um, 
And if you're changing that to a different model where, for example, one idea that was talked about in the, in the group is, you know, could you do a full day to do, you know, four days, four half days of the elementary and a full day? Well, that comes back to, to negotiated days and, and that oh, sort of okay. thing. So there's, it's a bigger, it's an important conversation, but it was a bigger win than just, well, these parents want this, let's just change the whole thing. So it was definitely on our radar and something that we're going to come back to to try and see what we can do about that. So it would have to be part of negotiations? It, that's only one aspect of it. Okay. There's many aspects. You know, it's also, it changes the way the school school functions in the fall. Um, there's also discussions about, do we move it up into a different part of the year? So there, there were lots of different ways that we can address conferences, but we didn't feel we had enough enough input and enough process to make that significant of a change, even though we know it's an issue that needs to be addressed and we want to address it, it would be pre we felt it would be premature to do it right now on this calendar. Okay, okay, thanks. Thank you. Any other questions about the calendars? All right. I move to approve the calendars uh, as proposed on item 14. Point what number are we on? <laughs> <laughs> one point. Fourteen point one point three. Yeah, thank you. Okay. The second. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, Board of Education meeting dates. Um, the so, so I just wanted to give. Sorry, before before we get to this, January before, before we um, get too much discussion. I just wanted to make sure the board um, knew this was, was, a, was a revised. Okay. This has been revised now on the um, on agenda online, so for the public and for the board at the same time. Um, I do want to make make a, a point that the last row there for June, ideally we would want to, we would want that the, the fourth Tuesday, the regular meeting. It says on um, on the revised says the twentieth for public mm -hmm. hearing El Cap and budget. It should say the 27th. And Chris, okay. feel free to jump in. You need enough time to prepare for that, and then two days later, before the 30th, well, on or before the 30th, we need to approve it. So it would it would say June 13th, June 27th for the public hearing, the 29th for board approval. And just just to uh, put a fine point on that, so we bring the preliminary budget to the very first board meeting in June. Mm -hmm. And then we have all of the state reports that we have to complete and have available for review by three days before the next meeting. Mm -hmm. So two weeks, at least 10 days, but two weeks gives us time to do that. And then remember the public hearing has to be on a separate night from the final board adoption. Right. And that changed a couple of years ago, briefly during COVID. They allowed us to do the public hearing and the board adoption at the same time. But that's why that two days, nothing changes from the public hearing to the final adoption date. It just is meeting the the language of the law. And then it, no, go ahead. No, that's fine. No, you go. Are you done? Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> um, thank you. And then um, the January dates they seem kind of late. Yes, because if you look at it, because based on the student calendar. Did you just approve? No. <laughs> <laughs> we, we are actually out on break until January 6th. Uh huh. And so to come back, so that's the reason, the rationale for putting mm -hmm. them on the. Uh, so you think the 10th is too early? 10th and 24th? Yeah, that's Oops, sorry. I wanted to. It would, give oh, us two, it would give us two weeks before, from the start of the semester to the first board meeting. Right. And then, furthermore, the thirty-first would be two weeks before the fourteenth. To prep, to prep, and do a board agenda review. Yeah, okay. Okay. And there's no well, so, especially if we have the election. <laughs> you might need that time. Okay. Cool. Sorry, Matthew. I'm confused on the June twenty to twenty-seventh thing because yeah. I just pulled up the, the posted calendar on the on our website, and it says 20th. So do we need to amend? We need to do amend. Oh, okay. Should, yes, okay. exactly. It should say, it should, that last row should say June 13th, 27th, public yeah. hearing, El Cap and Budget, 29th, 5th Thursday. So we okay. have a motion to amend from, yeah. from the 20th to the 27th. We'll make that change before public change. And then I had a question about going a whole month between our March meeting and our April meeting. Is that going to 
be a problem. I feel like we always approve a lot of stuff around that time of the year. I know that it's possibly an extended spring, spring, spring break, break. So we but we might have, be yeah. in there. We might not. We might be. We may have the two week pause of July. There's a the wide of that long break. Yes. Yeah. Two weeks. Say it, girl. Yeah, why is there only one meeting in April? Because we have two weeks of spring break yeah. in case of emergency. Right. Okay. Yes. Yeah. And I will tell you, it could, I mean, there could be the need for another meeting to call a special meeting, especially when we look at construction and contracts and stuff. But um, other than that, I think we can make it work. Okay. Okay. Cool. okay. Yeah, that was my one question. So. Got it. Makes sense. Right. So I'll move to amend the posted calendar uh, such that the June. The current June 20th meeting is June 27th for public hearing on LCAP and budget. I'll second for that. 2023. For 2023, thank yeah. you. Yes. I'll second. Oh, the favorite. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot the phrase. Like, what am I supposed to say? Aye. 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 Okay, I move to approve the 2022-2023 uh, meeting dates as amended. I second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <laughs> All right. Um, next item. Jason, I think this is you again. Yes, yeah, so this action item is um, a variable term waiver request for an adaptive PE teacher to teach in special education and to um, have this uh, to have this waiver go through, it needs to be an action item that we approve. Um, this is for an adaptive PE teacher. We didn't have a lot of qualified candidates. We did find one that needs this waiver in order to um, fill this position. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. I move to approve the term waiver request for an adaptive PE teacher. Yeah. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Same situation. This is the same situation. Um, but we're listing them and they need to take action on each of them individually. This is a high school um, English teacher. Um, this person is uh, not credentialed, but they're close to have almost all the requirements and already has an English degree. And so we're requesting uh, that this variable term waiver be approved as well. I move to approve this variable term waiver request. Second. Um, I actually have a question about it. How far off are they because i mean it says they have the c best but is there anything else say that again Joanne. teaching they say that again like how far off are they from meeting the requirements besides the c best that that was the only that's the only thing that's missing okay. is passing the c best oh okay so uh jason do they enter as an intern then i'm sorry is it is are do they are they employed as an intern Yes, they are currently they are currently employed as an intern. How did they get into the credential program without passing the C list? I'd have to I'd have to I'd have to look back at at, at how that is. Um, I, I don't have an answer for that. They got they got an intro 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 credential um, intro credential. I just I thought you needed to pass it before you could. Get into get the yes. And yeah. this is just till the end of the school year? Yeah. Yes. Okay. It looks like they're working with Hillary Cuff. Is that what her name's on there? So we're and we're working, obviously working to support them getting through so that they can be fully credentialed. Um, okay. That's our intent. Okay. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. All right. Still me. Um, 1.7. <laughs> so um, this is approval of assignments for outside the credential area. We did a number of these at the beginning of the year. Uh, and these are three more that we uh, are bringing forward to approve that were not brought earlier in the year. I move to approve the assignments outside of the credential area. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Yeah. Um, all right. Next up, discussion information items. 
So that we, looks like we, nothing. We have the 14.1.2. And we point have the settlement report. Oh, I thought we were doing that later. Where do we move that down to? To discussion. To, yeah, to yeah. discussion. I mean, we can do it. Oh, okay. At any point. Okay, 15.1.1. Okay. Here we are now. Jason? All good. good. <laughs> Nothing to discuss there. It's all good. <laughs> all good. All good. All good. Okay. That's all that matters. All right. <laughs> it, 14, well, I guess it's 15 point something. 15.1.2 now, which was formerly the board bylaw revision. Mm -hmm. Yes. So just want to give a little bit of background here. Um, and so while I was out, the <laughs> board member asked uh, to bring this bylaw for discussion. So to change clerk to vice president slash clerk. Mm -hmm. um, as you can see from the, the amended item that's on the, on the agenda now, um, we took out, it's really about the bylaw. So we're, 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 if you look at the agenda item, it's you know, first, first reading of board bylaw revision. So we took out the board policies, just about that board bylaw. You can see that there's an impact, notably, to bylaw uh, 9100 organization, um, including the, 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 um, the last sentence, if you look on that one around, that the, the clerk will then become the president next year. So I didn't cross that out. I don't know if, I, if, I, looked at, if I looked at the history historically, we, have been we haven't been following our board policy. No. So I, I took that out. The, I mean, this is just a discussion for you all to discuss and give us some direction on how you, how you want to move forward. If we were to change the this bylaw, there are there are several, quite a few board policies that will that are, will be impacted. We'll have to bring them back one. We'll have to bring them back individually on board policies. It would just be technical edits, right, to change clerk to vice president slash clerk. So just kind of giving you the background here. So it's kind of, it's for, it's, this is an opportunity for you all to discuss, figure out this is the direction you want to go in. We will we'll make it happen. Because Maddie was the clerk and she opted not to become. And I looked at the history and there, yeah. there, we have a lot of presidents who are two term presidents, so that's not happening. And the past board I was on, Phoebe was a clerk. She never became president. So I would like, I would like to take that out and that automatic. Um, I just, because sometimes people are perfectly happy and they, they don't want to be president. It's a lot of responsibility. So I just think we should take out that mandatory automatically. Can we add something that allows student board members to be clerk slash vice president? Is there anything that would already prohibits them from being closed session clerk? Uh, yeah. Does it? I don't know. Well, I'm well. I mean, I did notice that some of the responsibilities of the clerk are to sign, mm, okay. con, you know, don, don yeah. So that's really not. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's really the only thing they have. Yeah, <laughs> closed session too. I, I, sure. Yeah. yeah. I'm not sure. I don't think. Yeah. I'm happy to look at. I'm no, happy I to check with legal. I don't, if it I don't makes think them sign a contract, that. I don't yeah. think we can. Yeah. yeah. Like, I'll do that. Sorry. Um, I did have a question about the. Uh, the duties of the clerk slash vice president. Um, and that was number two. Uh, it says maintain such other records or reports as required by law. Um, mm -hmm. In my short year, I don't remember doing <laughs> any of that. <laughs> it was two years ago. So, you know, but uh, I, I don't know what that means, actually. <laughs> and, you know, uh, and the clerk doesn't, because the, the, Superintendent is the secretary. Yeah. Right. So do we need to keep that in there legally? I, I would assume it's legal language, but um, maybe we should take it out. Maybe we should look. I, I don't know. Um, and nobody will ever want to be close. Yeah, Maddie's not trying to be personally liable. <laughs> I, I, for, think that, I think that's the intent that that's the responsibility that's delegated to the superintendent exactly. that delegates yeah. it to staff. Well, that's so. what they said to the secretary. Right. Yes. right. But not. But this is maintain such other records or reports as required by law. Uh -oh. the, yeah, I think that means you have to keep that. every board I mean, packet you've board ever received. Years. Well, you know what? I do. So <laughs> <laughs> I, think I even have all the budget reports, Chris. <laughs> 
Chris's, yeah, Chris's point, I think it's something you delegate. You, you delegate that it, the clerk delegates to the superintendent and staff. We're keeping track. We're keeping all of these these documents. We're doing We're a job for you. Yeah. I'm doing a fine job. <laughs> all right. Any other concerns or questions about that? <laughs> it, should that be changed? With, where, with, where are you, Maddie? Okay. So it's under bylaw 9123 that's to be amended to read uh, clerk vice, the duties of the clerk vice president. Um, so, Maddie, I read that to mean that, you know, like the, the few times that I have had to sign something, it was to attest that something actually happened. Mm -hmm. and that's but that's the I, next one. Number three. Sign documents as directed by the board on behalf of the district. And well, sign all other items. That's a little, bit, that's a little different. There are some <laughs> documents that I've signed that said such and such happened. It's just a, to witness. yeah, a witness to an event. Oh, okay. Okay. I think she's talking about two, Sheldon. Right? Maintain such other records or reports as a third by law. That yeah, is the one. I mean, that's what I took it to mean. You know, we, oh, we, we could come back and provide clarity. We can get okay. Okay. Um, specifically what documents they this might be the referring first to. Reading. Well, and also, don't they talk about the presidency being a one term? No. That was what we oh, you took it out already. I struck it out unless you want to bring it back. No, 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 no. Thank you. And thank you for doing it, Matthew. I really appreciate it. Although I should be. I don't know why, but it just sounded like a I think clerk vice president sounded better. For if everybody agrees that the president should serve another term, so it should be an option. It is, and, and if we take it out, it would be an option. Okay. Right? Why it, just says, it just says the board shall. It's just, it's just silent. Each year, elect one of its members to be okay. president and another member to be clerk vice president. It doesn't set a limit on the board. Perfect. Term limit. Thank you. So are we happy with this? Yeah. These changes? Yeah. Anything? So we'll bring it back for a, for a second. For action. Yeah. Okay. Action. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. And then again, okay. once, once this is done, then we'll bring the board policies one by one so that you can look through them and they'll be technical. Okay. 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 All right. Um, educational services, equity study. Yeah, so we're, we've been excited to receive the, the equity study reports. Uh, they gave us kind of the raw, raw report and we've been going through it and we realize it is a lot of information <laughs> that would would not uh, do it justice with a 10 minute presentation. Let's let's put it this way. Yeah. Tony and I spent about three hours looking through draft presentations and then we, Tony had on here for a 10 minute presentation said there's no way it's going to be a 10 minute presentation. So we need so. a study session. Yeah, so we would propose a study session where we can take the time to actually dive into the data, ask the questions we want to ask, get clarification, yeah. make sure we truly understand. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we have a proposed date for the uh, study session. Let's, we want let's to hear it. Let's yeah. hear it. Yeah. We, we would propose March 1st, uh, probably 5 to 7. March, I'm sorry. I didn't March 1st. First. First. Tuesday, March 1st. So it would, be a, it would be a study session. Of course, all board members, student board members, welcome to you know, our, our events. Public, it'll be a public, it's a public meeting to support a study session to go over the equity study. We're proposing March 1st from 5 to 7 30. We think about two and a half hours to just to kind of keep that, that time frame open. Yeah, it's yep. a Tuesday on a non, non board meeting date. Does that work for everybody? the only conflict is office hours at adult ed? But so if we could just reschedule that, we could, yeah, okay, and then. The other nice thing about having it on a Tuesday at 5, 7 30, we also um, feel free to jump in, Tony. We want to um, really want to engage with staff, teachers, and staff with, with this um, study. And so during um, EERC, we talked about inviting our principals um, and a teacher staff from each site to come in and hear, listen, be a, be a participant um, during the study session. And then kind of when we talk about next steps, then they can, they can continue with that committee. So um, if, if, you're, if everyone here is good with the first, that gives Tony some time to now reach out to principals, gives many of our principals to participate and bring um, a, a, rep, a rep from their site. 
I would ask that they're strongly encouraged that maybe yes. to come. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just yeah. like when we had that forum at the library three years ago. Mm -hmm. um, just yes. super impactful. And it will be a hybrid. Strongly encourage you. Meeting? The admin? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. The admin and, 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 and and then are we going to have it here because it feels like a lot of people for this space i don't know if there's enough space we'll have it hybrid it'll be hybrid. oh hybrid yes. okay yes. so they're not in here they're welcome to come okay they're welcome to okay zoom inside. okay um we know that uh, orendo will probably zoom in so it'll be oh, yeah. it'll be a similar format to this that'll oh. also probably increase our participation from mm -hmm. yes yeah, from Okay, so Tony, it sounds like the first works, so and we'll I'll confirm everything, and we'll set it up. Great, thank you. Thank you for all your work on that. Um, future business. What last bylaws? What last? Yes, we'll we'll yeah 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 yeah. Anyone else future business? Katie or Malaya, is there anything you guys yeah. want to see discussed at some point? No. Oh, actually, I had a random, totally unrelated question. <laughs> like, and I don't know if this happened recently or kind of a while ago, and I just wasn't aware. They removed class rank for Kalama High. Do you guys know anything about that? Yes. Mm -hmm. We do. Oh. We can bring that up. Okay. We can have a discussion around that. Tony, oh. did you hear her? Can you say it one more time, Katie? Oh, I was just asking about um, they removed class rank for Carly Mahai. Uh, class rank? Mm -hmm. Class ranking. Um, are you asking how? how we do just for what reason? I just wasn't aware of what you wanted. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, 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 it's an agenda, a feature yeah, agenda. It's an agenda item. Yeah. So yes. we can. You don't yeah. need an answer. We don't answer right yeah. now. Yeah. Can, I, can I put it on a future agenda? We'll yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Future yeah. business. Yeah, that's what it, that we. Good we, question. Yeah. That's, yeah. Actually, that I think I love that, and also just the whole uh, issue around class rank and. So we'll just we'll put it under as a discussion item. So, okay. All right. Anyone else? No. All right. Meeting. Well, we're going to reconvene to close session. No, wait. 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 One second. Did you have something? Yeah. So I was curious about. I'm on diversifying narrative. I'm, uh -huh. I'm curious about how that's going with the board. Um, okay, so great, good, thank you. So let's um, we can add that to future business as well. Okay, yeah. so you're asking That's for my, let's you're, see you're requesting right. a diversifier narrative, sort of an update or or presentation. Yeah, okay, okay, so we can yeah. put it on for we can put it on for, for discussion and then see if you want to help us further a larger Excellent. presentation or, or just a discussion. Okay, thank you for All bringing right. that up. Okay. Anything cool. else? Okay, so we need to go to back to closed session. All right. So we are reconvening to close session.